scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. He who does not have sin to cast the stone. And I'm sure he was the oldest guy who was the other party there. And he lifted the stone and he dropped it. Everyone dropped it and he said, Woman, where are thine accusers? And she turned. He said, Neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. Jesus manifested. That was not word of knowledge. That was the gift of the word of wisdom how many times we have been whipped by life because we lack this an opportunity that would have honored you how many pastors who stood before government officials would have made certain statements by the spirit that would have given them access to certain things imagine how many foolish decisions our loved ones have taken born again and filled with the holy spirit but not allowing these possibilities find expression you need the gift of the word of wisdom in your life. Education is limited. Your experiences are limited. You cannot wait to respond to life only based on your exposure and experience. You will need that grace. Can we pray in one minute and cry to the God of heaven and say, Lord, I'm tired of foolish decisions. I access wisdom by the Spirit. the word of wisdom my life is full of challenges that need to be surmounted and Lord I need a dimension of wisdom that is beyond my age there are many of us in ministry you, you have challenges financially administratively in terms of growth and membership there are many of us here you need grace you don't know what to do should i get a job should i do business you you need the word of wisdom you need the word of wisdom a supply of intelligence that is above this realm you need god to communicate something that bails you out lift your voice and pray in one minute help me oh god spirit of the living god i open up to you my destiny is at the mercy of your wisdom speak to me Tired of piercing myself again and again with needless sorrows. When your wisdom can bail me out of the vicissitudes of life. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Please sit down. We have to run. Just help those under the anointing. In 2004, I spent three weeks praying this gift into my life three weeks god is my witness praying it into my life i said lord you cannot send me as foolish as i am and i am too young to make the decisions i should make i need a supply of intelligence that is higher listen some mistakes in life don't have second chance some 
answers the bible says to not be hasty you can stand before your destiny helper and blow up your opportunity forever that's why jesus kept quiet because this is not a usual communication you need the spirit to speak how many people have stood before their supervisors how many people have stood before their financial helpers how many people have stood before their boss He says, I will give you a mouthpiece and a wisdom that your enemies will not be able to gainsay or resist. Number two, the word of knowledge. What is it? The word of knowledge is a supernatural insight and access into past and present events. With a view to preferring solutions. With a view to preferring solutions. Access into happenings. Access into occurrences. Sometimes even occurrences that predate your own birth. Our world is full of wickedness. And we need this dimension of the Holy Spirit that can help us to go back in time and piece together useful informations that help us to interpret the happenings in our lives are we together now oftentimes the secret to the future is in the past when we can sustain the eyes to go back and see and understand word of knowledge The purpose of the gift of the word of knowledge primarily aside from supplying information is to build the faith and the conviction of the recipients if I can reach into an information in your life and supply you an information that might be useful in helping you interpret your today it can build your faith now notice that the gift of the word of knowledge and prophecy works peri pursue. In fact, many people mistaking this gift, half of what people call prophecy is the manifestation of the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge only deals with past events and present events. When it becomes futuristic, that's prophecy. Past events, present events. Two examples very quickly. In John chapter 1, you read from verse 45 to the last verse 51. John chapter 1. The Bible tells us about a man called Nathaniel. Are we together? Nathaniel was beckoned by Philip that Jesus, they had met the Messiah that was prophesied. And Nathaniel made a very sarcastic statement. Nathaniel said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? While all that conversation was happening, Jesus was somewhere watching them. Then Nathaniel comes and Jesus sees Nathaniel. Here's what Jesus said. An Israelite indeed in whom there is guile. And Nathaniel saw him and said, uh-uh, you mean you know me? And he said, Nathaniel, while you were under the tree insulting me, I saw you. <gasps> Nathaniel was amazed. Immediately, an attestation, this is the Christ, truly, the son of the living God. And then he said, Nathaniel, just because I gave you this, you were stunned. You are going to see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending. Remember when Jesus was with the Samaritan woman at the well. That woman had the potential to bring a lot of people to hear and listen to Jesus. Preparing them for what would happen at redemption. But there needed to be an access point. The woman had to be convicted. And then Jesus came to her. And they started a conversation about water. And then Jesus looks at her. And says to her, Madam, you have five husbands past. The sixth one that you are with now is not your husband. And she looked, she said, I perceive you are a prophet. And then he began to talk to her. The Bible says she left her water pot there. Ran to the city and said, all of you come. Come and see a man. He didn't say come and see a preacher. Come and see a man that manifested a gift that astonished me. Come. Come see a man that has told me what I've done and when the people came and listened to Jesus here was their testimony we now believe not because of what you have said we have had that encounter by ourselves the word of knowledge if used in accordance to the word is powerful I have watched people's faith jump leap 
just because a communication one word was given to them by the spirit do you know let me tell you this never fight the gifts of the spirit it may be abused that's why we are balancing it but do not ever fight it the encouragement that happens to your faith when a true man of God gives you a genuine word of knowledge not a general guesswork that you know this is not edifying there are words of knowledge that are not blessing are we together if I look at you and say you have pain all over your body the probability is yes something must be paining you somewhere so that's not powerful enough to convict you but when I look at you and say pastor alpha while you were eating yam from home before coming and this and that and that and that and I talk to you ah then something happens to your faith and all of a sudden you look and you are like my the God who can see me is the one who is telling me now by this time tomorrow you will be foolish to doubt him are we together now the word of knowledge listen listen let me have your attention the word of knowledge is a powerful instrument of building faith have you gone to a place where you see people being sarcastic and nasty and lousy and insulting the cynical people and then one really strong accurate powerful well delivered word of knowledge and all of a sudden you see everybody wipes sleep and say lift up your hand and everybody is lifting and open the unbelief in our world require the gifts of the spirit to tame doubt and release the power of God to people. I remember betting with a woman the gender of her child and I told her, she argued it was a female. I said, if it's a male, you will make pepper soup for me. If it's a female, I don't know how to make pepper soup, so I will give you the financial equipment. I started dancing. I said, hey, hey, hey. nobody's going to make pepper soup for me what a free way of earning a living <laughs> imagine what happens to your stubborn loved ones you know we have almost every family has for whatever reason we have people around us who the devil is trying to snatch you pray in tongues they shout they talk nonsense I want to go to the house of God no 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 and then one day God just lands in a way and you commune not not for self aggrandizement you speak a powerful word to your father and say sir the Lord told me to tell you while you were at the bank trying to collect that money it was remember that your argument with that woman her name was Stella usually they will act as if you are lying and then later they'll call you and say who told you let me tell you the human spirit can never resist the supernatural. Our pride can claim it doesn't matter. It's a lie. It's a lie. If you, if you encounter the word of knowledge, whether you repent or not, you can't sleep that night for sure. Ah, ah. He called my name and said this and said that. I think where it was in Joss, if you can remember, when just ministering um some i think one of the polytechnics and then while i was ministering the holy ghost ministered to me that there was a young man who was doubting you know you know these are people where you know doubting doubting how are we sure remember this story and i said there is a young man now this is what you are thinking to yourself you are doubting and this is what is wrong with you god will heal you now when that guy came out even me when you see him you know it had to be god that brought him out the guy just came out dragging and said honestly he was standing there doubting this thing i was like magic brothers and sisters our shout is too much let the gift help us our 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 begging is too much let the god brought these gifts to make the gospel superior the, the way we communicate this thing we are the mercy of people's wills we beg we beg you know everybody oh yeah lift your hand now is jesus not here my jesus and everybody's looking at you where is he and you are negotiating with them no the bible says that when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power 
you are a prophet, if someone gives you a word of knowledge, it will impress you. You won't say because I'm walking it. It's like you are, it's like you are a nurse. When you are sick, won't you turn for injection? Will you say because I'm a nurse? No. Another nurse will give you an injection and you will receive it so that you will be well. Listen, I want you to cry tonight and say, Lord, my family needs salvation. Let this gift of the Spirit work in my life. Pray one minute. There are doubters in my community insulting and blaspheming the name of the Lord. Oh, that you would grant me access, oh God. The word of knowledge, supernatural illumination, insight into events, explaining the mysteries of the lives of men, helping men make sense of their lives. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Number three, discerning of spirits. I can spend the whole night here. But let's see how God will help us. What's discernment? Or we call it discernment or discerning of spirits. Please do not joke with this gift. This gift of the spirit will be... Um, it will bail you out of many pains. Are we together? What is discerning of spirits? The gift of perception perception the ability to perceive spiritual impulses the ability to know the origin the source and the motivation behind the manifestation the origin the source and even the motif behind the manifestation is called discernment Whether activity is initiated and sustained by God, whether it is an act of man's will or it is demonic, you will never judge them by the physical results. It will take discernment for you to know that which is of God. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you and I submit to you with all humility. It will be foolish to imagine everything happening in the body of Christ is of God. No. There are things that are orchestrated by demons. There are doctrines that came from devils. The Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. There is such a doctrine as the doctrine of demons. Not the study of demons, an understanding that was fabricated intentionally from the pit of hell to destroy the saints. Are we together? You need discernment. It is only through discernment that you can judge righteous judgment. It's impossible for you to judge accurately if you lack discernment. You will call good evil. You will call evil good. You will call saints devils. You will call devils saints. It takes discernment. The realm of the spirit is not heaven. The realm of the spirit is a spiritual environment. The environment that birthed this realm. The raw materials that have now crystallized as matter in this realm came from the realm of the spirit. And anyone who has access to the realm of the spirit has a superior advantage. Whether through divination, whether through the Holy Spirit or any other spirit. Any spirit that can access the realm of the spirit has an advantage over this realm. That's why Jesus said, I am the door. There are many other entrances. But he says, I'm the authorized entrance. Meaning you can enter the house through a window. You can enter the house through somewhere. If I enter your house, if you step into your house and you find me and I crawled my way through a gutter somewhere, am I inside your house? Yes. Did I enter legally? No. The authorized way is the gate and the door. 
I've told you every power you see being manifested on earth is God's power every plus the power manifested by witchcraft once have I spoken twice have we heard that all the only reason why it is called witchcraft is because there is an agenda behind that result and the whole spirit is not the spirit that authorized that possibility to find expression so there is the correctness of the result does not mean it is of God the correctness of the result is gauged by the spirit that sponsored it any activity in the realm of the spirit sponsored by the Holy Spirit has God's endorsement that means that it is possible this guy can be sick and as a herbalist I can conjure leaves based on a book my grandfather taught me correct and he says when you put lemon and add it with guava drink pour charcoal on it set it on fire in the night it can raise a kind of incense that will bring health to him and my grandfather will say that's how we lived healthy this guy can be sick I will conjure those things it will shock you right in your presence the way the guy will be healed you say I can't feel pain again he said that's it and he will go and bring someone else now if I come as a man of God and I say wow we are brothers we are not brothers we are not brothers we are not brothers are we together no we are not brothers brothers are those from the same father and mother or at least father correct we can't be brothers you see because the spirit one time I was ministering to a lady and they took her somewhere in Zaria here and she, she described a very nasty experience that she had she said when she went there one of the things that happened to her was that they will burn you will drop your money not honorarium there's an exact amount that you drop once you drop the man you know the whatever it is will now call certain names cajole you know read from books slates and all kinds of things and the moment they say it a spirit will tell that man um whatever spirit influence and then all of a sudden you know how it happens when people manifest the the victim now will start shaking shaking and before you know it the spirit will start speaking now here's the interesting point after all the conversation with the spirit you now ask moya why did you come maybe they annoyed me or i didn't eat you know how spirits talk they are so dull i have no i've not eaten and you people are eating in this land and we are here hungry and then instead of casting out the devils because they cannot cast out the devils they do what we call occultic pacifism you pacify by an atonement you see that so you is the spirit that will tell you what it will eat so the spirit to say one black goat you said oh, that's it you to all of you had it's not me that wants to eat the goat and then they bring the goat and the only thing the man burns is the legs and the head <laughs> who will not burn that part and settle down with the real part of the goat and said look he that serves in the altar should, should eat from the altar And then when I looked at the lady in my mind, I said, what is, what is all this thing now? And you know, before I would talk, all of a sudden, that spirit just started manifesting. And I said, honestly, I don't have all this time. Please, I'm tired. Just live in the name of Jesus Christ. And that was the end of it. When the lady got up, her mother was surprised. And watch this. Because that, this thing, you will go for many days. It's not like you will go once. If you don't complete the, uh, the the program the demon gave it can backfire and kill everybody you know how it happens and all of that let me tell you all that is nonsense I repeat nonsense absolute nonsense now, there is a name more that was given to believers there is a name there is a name it says in my name it didn't say the mentioning of it you can shout Jesus till forever. And like the sons of Sceva, demons will pound on you like many people talk. It's not about pronunciation. There is a guy, there's one guy that committed a crime recently. His name is Jesus. I'm mean, one, one of these funny guys now. Not, not the footballer I was reading. I said, Jesus, can you imagine that guy? So you stand and shout. And while you are shouting, Jesus, Jesus, no. It is not in the pronunciation it's in the revelation the miracle is in your understanding that's why Jesus looked at them and said go 
one of the standard proofs of spiritual maturity is discernment you cannot say you are matured in the spirit if this gift is not working in your life brothers and sisters i submit to you and i join the many loving men of god around the world and together we take responsibility for not helping the body of christ mature we have produced miracles we have produced signs and wonders but the average believer is not mature at all we do not understand the speakings of the spirit we do not know how to interpret spiritual things we are dull of hearing no ears that hear no eyes that see but god is helping us in jesus name there are many other texts that talk about discernment the bible says in hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 let me give it to you please just write very quickly hebrews chapter 5 verse 14 the bible says that strong meat is for those who are of full age who by reason of use have learned to exercise their senses to discern between good and evil in acts chapter 16 from verse 16 to 18 when you read acts 16 from verse 16 to 18 paul came into a city and there was a young lady the bible called her a damsel he said that this lady had the spirit of divination and some business people saw her and saw the potentials in her and they negotiated she would give word of knowledge and prophecy and she would bring money and the bible says they made much gain with it and then one time she saw paul preaching and here's what she said that's why you need discernment these are the holy men of god they have come to show us the way of righteousness let me tell you what many of us would do say wow you mean how long have you been in ministry I never knew that. I mean, you are so generous. You don't know me. You're already talking about me. So let's walk together. Can we walk? Come to my pulpit on Sunday, even if it's a Saturday night. Listen, please. Hallow your altar. Don't bring anybody just because you saw gifts. Let there be a system of vetting for the sake of the sheep. Are we together? These are the men. The first day, Paul kept quiet. The second day, the Bible says she kept doing it. One time, Paul looked and said wow prophesying word of knowledge and Paul just switched in the realm of the spirit and saw a demon manipulating and said look hurry up let's we must make gate and Paul casted that demon you know they beat Paul because of it the rest is history the people were angry because they knew that business was closed for them as soon as the lady was delivered she got up madam are you seeing nothing I'm not seeing anything again Lord give us discernment first kings chapter 3 verse 16 to 28 first kings chapter 3 verse 16 to 28 we don't have the time but let me give you that story i wanted to use it as the text the classic text to explain discernment for you the bible says that god gave solomon an understanding heart and his first test was two harlots who came before him praise god the Bible says that those, all of them had, you know, they had a child each. And then the Bible says, whilst they were sleeping, one slept on her child. I don't know what kind of sleep that was. And suffocated the child to death. Then she got up in the middle of the night, shook her child and found out her child was dead and quietly replaced the child. The next day when they got up, there was, there was an issue. The woman wanted to breastfeed her child. And notice that the child was dead but she looked well and said no this is not my child off they went to Solomon and when they got there the woman who swapped the child started you know they started advocating and said this and that and that and Solomon looked that was a serious situation now notice this is what I want to teach you notice how Solomon manifested discernment the first thing he did was he said bring the sword that's the word of God go and get me the sword this confusion requires the word of God that is able to cut asunder and divide between bone and marrow. That knife was a similitude of the sword of the spirit. Discernment is impossible if you do not understand the character of God. Not just the word of God. You must know what God can do and what he cannot do. The operation of any spirit must be consistent with the general operation of God such that even if you do not find a scripture for it it still must be consistent verbatim i 
And so when they brought the sword, he said, bring the child. Bring the issue of contention. This is how we are going to discern. We are going to use the word of God to divide that issue. And immediately he lifted the sword. The sword was not for the child. It was for their hearts. The woman, the woman whose child was, like the Bible says, can a mother forget her suckling child? I said, no, no, please. If it's issue of death now, hand it over. And the other woman was saying, you see, I'm right. And Solomon said, I've gotten my answer. Madam, give this woman her child. Go and bury your own child. Discernment. Let me tell you something. In this our world, somebody can steal a laptop and sell that laptop and wear a suit and swear and say, me? Do I look like somebody who can steal a laptop? You need discernment. You can see somebody that looks like a thief truly. Looks like a thief, scattered, disorganized, but he may be one of the most honest persons in your life. Is that true? Policemen need this. Our, our, because the number of people in prison today that are not supposed to be there is only God that will help. You can look at me now, never believe that I will steal a laptop. What for? But what if I have a spirit that makes me steal it? Are we together now? We have blamed innocent people. They carry money in your house and you come, no discernment. You call everybody. And a smart young chap who is the thief about to go for lectures. And one guy just comes out. He's, he may not be born again, but he doesn't steal. And you look at him and say, come. Are you going to just bring this money out now? Or they will arrest you. And he say, I'm not the one. You need discernment. If you do not have discernment, you are going to destroy your leadership because the world is full of deception. Are we together? Someone can be killing you and look at you and smile while you are dying, while they are piercing you. That's the person who said, don't promote this person. This person is not from this state. And you come and meet him and say, sir, my portion is stretching. He said, my son, ha, oh yeah, sit down. What did you discuss with them? And they were busy, this fool. But with discernment, as soon as you sit down, something in your spirit, you may not see a vision, but something refuses to agree. Something just says, uh uh. So, have you ever wanted to do something? Maybe you wanted to do business with somebody, or you wanted to do a discussion, or you were just saying, we are going to be partners, and you could not sleep in the night. Not fear, I'm not talking of fear. For, and everything, physically speaking, was correct. Have you ever made up your mind that you are going to ask a lady out? You prayed, you fasted, you were happy. On that day, after you talking and put your tie, your spirit, your, your peace ceased. Ah. He said, I mean, I look forward to this time. Let me tell you why many people land into trouble. We numb those things and continue and continue. You were about to travel, but nothing in your spirit, not fear. And you ignored it. Discernment is powerful. Discernment is powerful. But let me tell you something. No matter, most people train their discernment just by prayer. They never study the word. That's why they get into confusion. Are we together? If all you do is pray and pray and pray and pray, your eyes will be open to the realm of the spirit, but your capacity to interpret the impulses will be wrong. That's why you will give false visions. You will give false interpretations. You will see a nice lady. Come, darling. You will see a nice lady like this lady now. And you just sense something demonic in her. And because you do not have the word to understand, you just look and say, Kai, I stood near this lady and I had some, this lady must be a witch. No, sir, she's not a witch. You are not a good Bible student. You are a prayer warrior, but you do not understand the word. And you are using error to now change this lady and call her a witch. Are we together now? Let's be very careful. We have, we have destroyed people's lives. Pastors have used inaccurate discernment alongside other gifts to scatter marriages. Hello? We have called everybody witch. You just turn and you look at a lady like this. You say, why are you looking fine like this? You are a witch. No, you are not a witch. Pray for two of them and see who, who gets delivered. We must be careful. 
discernment is needed in our day today do you know prophets cried in the bible when things happened and they did not see it or, or perceive it they said lord why did you hide this from me may god build us to a point where nothing passes above you without your spirit receiving the seed. hallelujah praise the lord or some of us have those impulses but we do not know how to interpret it and respond to it you've been having an impulse like death is around the corner but you didn't know what to do until somebody died and say yeah so this is what i've been feeling those impulses are not caused by demons it is the holy spirit listen to my message spiritual perception the holy spirit is attempting to communicate to you if you do not have the word of god your dreams will be corrupted hello because dreams and visions are also an extension of discernment. Am I blessing you? One of the most deceptive tools that Satan is using now, I think in the last four or five years, has been aberrated dreams and visions. God would make your destiny, the devil would try to use the face of your destiny helper to chase you in a dream. You stand up and bind him for two hours, reject him in the physical, and remain poor and broke forever. We have to be careful. Satan has made families fight today by using the faces of mothers and fathers and you just say, I saw my mother with a knife. I say, I don't care. She will die. Be careful. Be careful. Listen, our only basis for escaping error is the word of God. Please, you have to believe what I'm saying. The study of scripture is important. It gives us an insight into how God works so we can judge from that lens. There are many dreams when you get up, you are just supposed to say nonsense. Blast in tongues for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, one hour, and that ends it. But some of us document everything. Plus, wicked dreams from the pit of hell, we document it. And then when you are mentoring somebody one day, you say, these are my cup of dreams, read it. And then the guy reads it and says, wow, strange creatures. I said, it's the realm of the spirit. Just keep reading. You see, let me tell you. Don't laugh. I'm saying this because there are people now who are not even sure of anything again. Is that true? Satan can manipulate dreams. One brother can have a dream and see ten sisters. He saw one. When he was praying about her, he saw another. You, you see confusion? I'm not saying he's a bad brother. But now you've seen 10 ladies, you are now confused. So even if somebody comes to prophesy and say, it's, it's um, sister seven that you saw, number seven. You say, what of two? I, I first saw one before seven and confusion. What of people who marry and have dreams and see someone who is not their husband and get up and say, that means I made a mistake. I knew it. I knew that this, look, you are married, you are married. There is grace to live. There is grace to work it out. It is this lack of thing that can make a man who has been with a woman for 20 years. She gave you children. All of a sudden, you made money. And then you go and meet. And, and it's usually us, prophets and apostles. You come and meet us and then we just conjure all kinds of stories. The man goes back home and drives the wife. Say discernment. Say it again, discernment. You need discernment. You need discernment to know who to help. Someone comes to lie down in your room all through that night. Strange occurrences happen. It's, it's not a devil, but he needs help. Are we together? People bring atmospheres. Discernment helps you to pick the impulses of people. Sometimes as I minister to people, that's how I know they're they are in trouble. They may come out for something else, but as I stand, there are all kinds of things happening and I know that something is wrong. Something is wrong. When you train yourself, you can discern the presence of angels. You will not see them, but you can describe them. It's a mystery. You will know, not just that they are angels, but what kind of angels and their operation. You can know their direction. Are you see if now you see let me tell you if your spirit is not trained to understand this you will always think that the people who are saying it are lying and there are people who are lying are we together but you can discern it you can know you can train yourself in a room by the time you are worshiping 
and the Shekinah of God comes. Not just by your shaking, you know, I'm not alone. This is Zion now. This room has changed. You, that's how you discern anointings. As a man of God, and you don't use anointing like a general purpose machine gun. You won't be effective in ministry like that. Because you will be ministering an area. You sense the anointing, but you could not discern what kind of anointing and to what degree. So, we can be ministering here now, and all of a sudden, the healing anointing now begins to come. If you do not have that discernment, you can be saying something else. And you see, the anointing, just like the Holy Spirit is very sensitive. When the anointing comes into a place and it's not acknowledged and channeled by faith for operation, it will be unfruitful, as powerful as it is. Nothing works without faith, even the anointing. Everyone say discernment. Think of how many things that have happened in our lives because we lack discernment. We need to cry for discernment. We need to cry for discernment. Can we pray in one minute? Say, Lord, discernment. Grant discernment. To discern good and evil. To discern opportunities. To discern helpers. To discern enemies. To discern doors. To discern manipulations of demons over my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need discernment. I think he was in Koinonia here one time after a very hot miracle service. The very next day, some guys called a lady. They called the lady and said she won. Uh, I, 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 don't, I can't remember the amount, but a very huge amount, you know. Let's assume maybe one million or five million. And told her you won it. Make sure you don't tell anybody. Quietly find your way to the front of, I, I think it was um, maybe First Bank or somewhere like that. And they met that lady there. The rest is history. The next thing, that lady found herself in Kaduna in a building. One of our ladies, she's no longer here. Found herself in Kaduna. They took her somewhere in your Kaduna. One place that looks like a warehouse. It was as if her eyes, I don't know how to, you, you get what I'm saying? As if you are, you, are, you are awake, but it's as if they did something to your eyes. And all of a sudden, her, it's like her eyes, she came back to herself and she called me i said where are you and she said i'm so 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 please i said hey, can you walk out and see a bike there i said take a bike immediately straight i told her take a bike straight to cow no matter how much just arrive there first i was waiting for that lady until she arrived and i said what happened to you she said honestly she doesn't know I remember one thief that Pastor Jakes caught in the, I think Pastor Jakes was going to Sabo or something. And then the guy was, you know, some of them use charm. Abracatabra. They sit down and they do something. They, they don't put their hand there. They can just hang it around and your money follows them. From today, that devil that comes near you, the, the fire and the discernment, you will, you will know and you will hold the hand and tell him, look, not everybody is a normal human being. There are people who are men plus possibilities. Men plus possibilities. Hallelujah. Can we touch on one more gift? Let's touch on diverse kinds of tongues. Hmm. How many have I done? One, two, three. Let's do four. We can continue next week because there's something I want to talk about that is hot in my spirit. I was preparing it well. I was, let's just talk about tongues. The Bible tells us that there are diverse kinds of tongues. Everybody say diverse kinds of tongues. When the Bible says diverse, that means that there are different kinds of tongues. Probably, I think one of the greatest conflicts between and thank God for great men of God like Reverend Tende who wrote a book I think it was a book particularly tailor-made to the northern church 
to help most every Christian pray in tongues. Wonderful text, you can get it and read it. It was an attempt to give a, a very solid 21st century biblical foundation because probably one of the greatest points of conflict between the Pentecostal charismatic and the Orthodox is this dividing line of this subject of tongues. Is that true? Many of us come from backgrounds and families where people have different kinds of responses. Some of us, even as we are now, probably we are still, there's an internal war over the issue of tongues. The Bible talks of diverse kinds of tongues. And in 1 Corinthians 13, Paul gives us a little, he opened it more to us. He says, though I speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels, Tongues of men refer to any earthly language. The language understood by men, used by inhabitants upon the earth. The tongues of angels refer to supernatural communications, not just languages used by angels, angelios, messengers. Any being that hails from the realm of the spirit, communicating a language that is not known to men, is called the tongues of angel. It was an ancient way of communicating spiritual things. The Bible, and theologically speaking, identifies, broadly speaking, three kinds of tongues. Number one is what we call tongues for personal edification and growth. You may want to write it down. Maybe you will help somebody with it. Tongues for personal edification and growth. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 2. The Bible speaks there. He says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. But to God not unto men but to God so there is tongues that is for personal edification and growth there's tongues that the Bible says that is a sign to unbelievers are we together as was the case in Acts chapter 2 when you read from verse 4 to 12 the day of Pentecost the Bible says that the people were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues. And among the many variations of tongues, they were communicating earthly languages. Are we together? And most of the people came and heard them. Let's go to verse 6. Just give us verse 6 and let's, let's look at what. It says, and when the sound occurred, the multitudes came together and they were confused. Because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Can you imagine? Almost every language there was represented. Someone was communicating it. Now, the communicators did not even know what language they were speaking. But the listeners, they were not just speaking a language in the spirit and interpreting it. They were communicating a language they never learned. Hallelujah. A sign to unbelievers. History is full of people who have done that. It happened to Kenneth E. Hagin. It happened to R.W. Shambach of Blessed Memories. People who would go to certain lands to preach and there would be no interpreter. And the power of God would fall on them. And they would preach in Chinese fluently for that period of time. Afterwards, everything goes down. So there is tongues as a sign to unbelievers. Then number three, there is tongues as a ministry gift. Tongues as a ministry gift for the edification of the body tongues as a ministry gift for the edification of the body first corinthians chapter 14 when you read from verse 4 and 5 5 particularly the bible talks to us about that tongues very important it says i wish you all spoke with tongues but even more that you should prophesy he says, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks in tongues. Unless, that means this is the condition for them to become equal. We are coming there. That the one who prophesies is greater than the one who manifests these kinds of tongues. Unless, that means the moment there is an interpreter, what he's speaking and the interpretation will equal prophecy. Are we together now? Yes. Now let me show you where the confusion is before we talk about diverse kinds of tongues. Give us verse 29 and 30. This is where many people have erroneously carved out a basis for confusion. 12, 29, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 12, 12, 29 and 30. Are all 
all apostles? What's the answer? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Watch this now. Do all have gifts of healing? No. Here's where many of our dear, wonderful men and women of God who are well-meaning, love the Lord, but have inaccurate understanding of the word of God. This is where the confusion has come. It says, do all speak with tongues? Now look at what context of tongues. The next verse, do all interpret. So he's talking about tongues as a ministry gift. Not tongues as for your personal edification. Are we together now? Not everybody will manifest the gift of diverse kinds of tongues. What is it really? The gift of diverse kinds of tongues is a supernatural communication. Listen. Prophecy in an unknown, unknown, an unknown language. Be it heavenly or earthly. Prophecy in an unknown language. You are communicating a word from the Lord to the people of God. But it is in a language that is not known by you, the speaker. And most, most often than not, by the listeners. When you communicate a word from the Lord that is supposed to edify the people, are we together now? But it's just that it came in a language that is not known by you, the speaker, nor the listeners. There must be, the Spirit of God must move upon you, the speaker, or another person to break down that spiritual message you brought so that the listeners can hear and apply their faith to it and receive. So when I begin to say everybody pray in tongues, there are a number of people who have problem with it and say, no, it's not in the Bible. It, it was there in the day of Pentecost. The church in Corinth were manifesting it. In fact, let me tell you this. Paul himself made a very profound statement and he said, I thank my God I pray in tongues more than ye all. When you read 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18 and then you read verse 39. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 18 and then verse 39 he says i thank my god i speak with tongues more than you all paul is saying look 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 i pray in tongues more than ye all not just that i i interpret all of this see that it is important please listen to me if you are here seated maybe you are just coming today inside or outside and you have shortchanged yourself because you have probably been sincerely but wrongly indoctrinated that praying in tongues is a gift that is for a few people the person who communicated that is not in error he was only incomplete is that true what kind of tongues if he means the gift of diverse kinds of tongues he's correct it's not for everybody the bible says that and where that gift is manifested it is only beneficial to the body if there is an interpreter the individual who communicated it or another person but the Bible says the tongues for edification does not need interpretation because we're not speaking to men. We are speaking to God. 14 verse 2. See that? Are we together now? Have you gotten that clearly? So this is very, very important. You are here and you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. I can begin to give you a rundown of several things you are missing. When the ministry was a lot smaller, I used to do that by myself. Then Pastor Jake's came join a Jimmy too used to join and now the ministry is, is so large we've handed everything to the prayer department and boy are they doing a great job if you are here you are not filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of praying in tongues I want you to know that Tuesday is a wonderful opportunity for you come whether or not is their their baptism you know a prayer you just come and make sure that they can minister to you hallelujah let me stop here and talk on words we will take from interpretation of tongues and, and the rest because next week, please don't mix next week. It will be a very great impartation. The Lord instructed me to activate these gifts. But I want to talk on words. The Holy Spirit, while I was getting ready to go and take my bath, I was just, you know, praying a little. And then the Holy Spirit began to minister to me. The anointing of the Spirit just came strong upon me. And the Lord told me that I should speak to people about words. Write this down. Words are God's instrument of creation. Words. 
next week when I teach you the, I, we finish the vocal gifts and the power gifts, we'll talk some more. But it's important for you to know. Words are God's instrument of creation. And one classic proof of spiritual growth and maturity is the ability to speak consistent with the word of God. Listen carefully. The ability for your communications and your speakings to always without fail be in line with the word of God. Now sometimes in an attempt to press into deeper dimensions of God, listen carefully and I must admit this to you. You know sometimes as we press towards superior dimensions in the spirit which is valuable, we tend to trivialize some of these foundational truths and look at them as though they are basic, they are for children. At every level of your work with God, your words will be the programmers of your destiny. Write it down. Your words are the programmers of your destiny. You don't talk anyhow, speak antichrist. You must culture your words by the word of God. You must ensure that your communication is building your life and your destiny. Many of us have destroyed our lives because we have allowed our words. Let me show you a few scriptures that will really challenge you. Can I give you some verses about words that have really, really blessed me? I tried to write the five or six most powerful scriptures I have found about words. And I will give it to you. Ready? Media, please help us. If we can project them, they will be great. Um, we need some speed here so that we can pray number one john 6 63 john 6 63 the words that i speak unto you jesus is speaking he says it is the spirit that quickeneth listen the flesh profited nothing the words that i speak unto you they are not just sounds that enter your ears they are spirit and life so while you are saying it is not for people like us we are the nobodies. You are sending spirits. You are sending instruments of creation. You are sending messengers into your future. Programming woe. Programming tragedies for you. Words are powerful. God created the universe through words. The only thing God did not create through words is man. And he said it. It's just that he added with his hand again. Every other thing God said, God saw. God said, God saw. Number two, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. And then we'll go to Matthew 12, 37. Let me give us a verse ahead. Media, please give us quickly. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4 and then Matthew 12, 37. It says, where the word of a king is, these are the scriptures that have blessed me and shaped my understanding of the power of the spoken word. Where the word of a king is, there is what? Power except you are not a king but if you are a king and the bible says five verse ten of revelations don't go there just write it it says that we have been made unto our god kings and priests a kingdom of priests and we shall how do we reign remember i've taught you dominion mandate one of the ways that we legislate is through the power the our legislature through words for where the word of joshua selman is there is power where the word of anybody in koinonia who has an understanding that means if i see things happening in my life and i don't like what is the first thing to do please talk to me what is the first thing to do listen listen don't let anybody make you feel these things are basic no you didn't create the realm of the spirit you came from there anybody that is born and says i will not eat food the regular way i want to live my own way Except you have caught the revelation of being a breatharian. Just know that you are going to die and die. You will die and you will shrink and die like Somalian children. The authorized way is that you continue to eat. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified like a court of law. There is a spiritual court right the realm of the spirit works on a legal basis he said for by thy word as easy as salvation is it takes words to impart the life of christ to you the word is near thee 
even in thy heart and in thy mouth the word of faith that we preach right Romans 10 verse 8 to 10 for by thy words thou shalt be justified and by thy words thou shalt be condemned so when you are condemned who condemned you it's not really the, your neighbor no no you only attracted to your life what your words made I refuse to speak negative about myself I refuse it you will never hear me say anything sarcastic about myself I love myself uh, I think it was school of ministry students I was teaching and I was telling them that these people that hang themselves it has been a wonder for me for many years even if I were not born again I won't hang myself no I love myself passionately hang myself no I may quarrel myself I may challenge my body to hang to go and stand on a rope and just tie myself no by your words you are justified by your words you are condemned Isaiah 43 verse 26 then we go to Numbers 14 28 and then just two more and we're done I just felt like speaking to us about words by the Spirit of God because many believers are becoming careless we speak anyhow and we don't mind and we keep programming things that destroy us and then we say it doesn't matter it does matter brothers and sisters everybody who worried everybody who strives for mastery must do so lawfully we don't invent the rules we find them out it's an ancient path and we walk in it Isaiah 43 and verse 26 he says the B part he said declare thou that thou mayest be justified how do you justify yourself so how does the sick justify himself I'm healed in the name of Jesus yes there might be pains but I decree and declare by his stripes I am healed now when you are saying this you see a lot of emojis look at you and say you are still a baby Christian until one day as matured as you think you are the devil is not a fool he will just allow pride to reach the highest point and sweep you one day in a way that you won't believe I speak over my life I speak over Koinonia Koinonia is planted Bible says they that be planted in the house of the Lord they shall flourish in the courts of our God even in old age he said they shall be fat and flourishing many of us used to do it before but now that we are becoming men of God we are throwing it away get back it is the childlike principle that has lifted ordinary people to become mighty if I tell you I don't speak the word I'll be lying I speak the word Shabakatoria. Joshua Selman you are blessed you are blessed I have a little blackboard with scriptures I recite those scriptures when I'm praying and God did extraordinary things through the hands of Joshua Selman so that handkerchiefs and aprons you don't wait till you see the result it is the words that command the results in the name of Jesus I declare wealth and riches are in my house durable riches I decree and declare I shall not die I'm exempted from the arrows that fly by day the noisome pestilence people like Pastor Chris who say keep how, how does he say it I, 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 keep, keep, thank you keep saying it don't stop talking it do it oh do it like that that's how it works believe me that's how it works you don't speak once and keep quiet listen if I speak and I say in the name of Jesus any spirit oppressing anybody and people are outside there why can I not speak and say in the name of Jesus everywhere my destiny helper is by the favor of God come that you saw it in the Bible is no guarantee that it will happen in your life you must speak speaking is so important to the point that they had to shut the mouth of Zechariah so that he would not speak nonsense if he had spoken he would have altered John the Baptist's destiny Numbers 14 28 very interesting scripture I found this scripture during a retreat Numbers 14 28 say unto them as truly as I live saith the Lord as ye have spoken in my ears not as you desire quietly as you have spoken in my ears question where was the ears when you were speaking did the ears come near your mouth 
So while you were blasting and saying in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. I decree and declare, oh grave, where is your sting? Oh death, where is this and that? And you are prophesying and you are speaking and you are saying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I have a job. The Lord grants me favor. I may not have an uncle. I may not have an auntie. But in the name of Jesus, God raise helpers. The Bible says God is bringing his ears down and is hearing. He says, as I, you have spoken in my ears, so will do not to your neighbor, to you, to you, to you. Isaiah 44 verse 26. Isaiah 44 verse 26. Isaiah 44 verse 26. Talking about the Lord. It says, He that confirmeth the word of his servant. Confirm. Meaning you speak and go. Let me tell you something. And performeth the counsel of his messengers. I want to teach you something about faith. Look up. Get any of my teachings on faith. Let me teach you something about faith. You see, Pastor Kong. Satan has lived very long in this realm. Believers, hear me. Let me speak to you. Satan has lived very long in this realm. And he understands that man, out of the assistance of the spirit, has one limitation. It's called our humanity. And part of the components of our humanity is that we can be wary. Is that true? Remember the Bible says the keeper of Israel you know doesn't sleep doesn't slumber but men sleep and they can slumber are we together so this is what he does satan knows that your eyes your optical eyes your ears all of these things control your perceptions hence your convictions and so what he does is he he makes sure that perpetually before you is an awareness of your limitations are you hearing what I'm saying now? Listen to me. So while you are praying, shakato, kata, kata, in the middle of hot prayer, the devil just comes in and says, where is the husband? And you would think it will enter you because you are in the spirit. It will just enter you and you say, oh God, am I not a beautiful lady? What is all this? You see, he has brought you back to his realm. The Bible says to walk in the spirit. Let me tell you what to do when that happens. That's a sign that your, a reaction is happening in the spirit. Every time you make such a proposition, please help that lady. That is a sign that something is happening in the realm of the spirit. Are we together? I remember the time when God showed me the vision of Koinonia. We're about to start. I saw overflows. Remember? I, I said I saw people coming from other cities, other places. That was what I saw. As at that time, they had not even expanded CGC. I remember when I was praying and I was going to go and announce it. While I was praying, 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 there came that voice of doubt again. Don't think it doesn't happen to me. No. Most people will lie to you and say it doesn't happen. It's a lie. It happens to everybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That while you are praying and the devil says you now want to disgrace yourself. And God, you have not even gotten a venue. They have not given you anything. Just because God showed you CGC. You now want to make a stupid statement. But the Bible says the spirit of faith has a character. It speaks. It doesn't wish and hide. No, no, no. It speaks. The spirit of faith. It speaks. It speaks. Oh, let me, let me play it safe. When, it, when the answer comes. So that I won't be embarrassed question whoever takes the glory should take the shame every time you speak you put pressure on god's integrity lord i take your word and i shout it let them hear so that if it does not happen they, no 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 i can't give you the glory and take the shame many of us here we have been threatened by our physical circumstances into silence let the redeemed of the lord not whistle say so say so i say it all the time i stand before my mirror joshua selman you are anointed you are rising from glory to glory superior dimensions of the anointing the favor of god is upon you sometimes i'm listening to koinonia message and while apostle is prophesying i'm there in my house kneeling down and listening because there are two different people i tell you 
and I listen I listen to apostles message I listen to his message more than many of you here I can sit down and claim because I'm the one ministry and never be blessed from it there is no koinonia message I've not listened to not for clarity and administration God is my witness I stand before him in your presence lift up your hands and I'm on my knees sometimes I play miracle service messages all while I sleep and I have strange encounters don't think this thing we're just faking it you don't walk this thing it will never work God is not a herbalist are we together sometimes I carry maybe Benny Hinn message or something I'm playing and in the sleep it continues mysterious encounters when you wake up the devil will say pastor alpha you have been prophesying for two weeks you to reason and you say no sir this is what many of us do god but it's true now see if you if you don't stop getting embarrassed by the absence of your result you will never walk by faith are you hearing what i'm saying this shame shame believers hear me I'm speaking to you by the spirit this shame consciousness of looking like a fool while awaiting your manifestation every miracle you see we risk taken by faith Lord I thank you nations are coming this ministry is rising oh you are talking too much thank God I'm not talking to you Lord you who I'm talking to you know me I, come on please don't go and shout in somebody's house it's not your house that's why the bible says, close your door enter your room close your door talk to your father there may not be money now but in the name of jesus father i'm a tither i'm a giver in the name of jesus i prophesy Jakatabata. and while you are speaking the holy ghost just says dance for one hour aha uh aha -huh. uh -huh. the word has come and you put one hot Igbo high praise hot high praise you may not know how to sing well she can sing for you you know those 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 wonderful Igbo sisters and you are dancing apostle I can't dance dance anyhow it's an instruction you dance like David danced and while you are dancing all of a sudden in that foolishness of faith the God I serve who takes the weak things the foolish things is working a miracle you see let me tell you this spiritual people must be childlike not childish childlike we are too matured for results all this big manism in the presence of God no sir are we together yes you must speak you get up and you have a bad dream you are lying down and one spirit comes to sleep with you and oppress you and you get up and you say Kai this thing has happened again no sir in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that I've been raised with Christ and the devil says didn't the spirit know while you're there just keep it keep at it Satan is a coward when he looks at let me tell you something when you are bold enough you will resist him and I promise you he will flee Is God speaking to us we have been wasting words the words that are supposed to be used for edification we use that energy for gossip for backbiting for speaking words of unbelief pastor Alpha, that 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 prayer we prayed that time shall you prayed it too let's be honest uh, not that I'm saying there's no faith to that's not what I'm saying but is it really working just don't you don't need to let nobody know just whisper it to me that's unbelief that thing you did is unbelief because you are trying to play games with God look if you are in this thing enter it and stay there and die in it if you are not in it then don't fake it I'm a talking spirit truly I talk not talkativeness reduce half of the time we use jumping around and talking stories and talking nonsense go back to the secret place this family is a family of peace this is my husband this is my wife we love ourselves no demon from anywhere is coming to scatter us you call your child 
Daddy, he thinks you carry him. Say, no, 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 I'm a priest now. This is not daddy. Bring your head. Shatos kataparadaba. Let him just be playing around the head or cry. Leave, leave him there. Don't feel sorry for him. Pray. You get up and walk around your house. Dr. Paul and Enche was saying something. They are, the Lord's garden that they are building now. He says almost every day he goes there to speak and build. Just the zinking of it, the, the roofing of that place is six million dollars. Six million dollars to face 70,000 capacity seater. It's not just ritual. He will go there quietly in the night at his level and status. Shakatabada. Lord, you have given the instruction. Let those who will publish it come. The Lord gave the word. I pray over Koinonia. Lord, thank you. Financial help us. Don't just say favor is happening automatically. No. Lord, there are men and women who will bless me every service. I pray that prayer. I'll be honest with you. Lord, I am serving you in truth. And the Bible says, he that ministers to you in carnal things. Lord, I expect favor. I'm a receiver with thanksgiving. I receive grace. You have a troublesome tenant. Someone who is disturbing you and making life easy. Instead of fighting physically, I've taught you spiritual intelligence. Shakatabata. Lord, this woman is making life com uncomfortable for my children. In the name of Jesus, I make decree. I'm a man of peace. I declare my borders are peaceful. Even God, who quickened the dead and collects, magnetizes, attracts things that be not as though they were. This is not positive confession. This is creation. 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 We are going to speak. Are you ready to speak? Please rise up on your feet. Let's close for tonight. Rise up on your feet. Brothers and sisters, I want you to believe these things that I teach you. These are the keys. These are the keys that produce the results we desire. These are the keys. I want you to lift your voice in one minute. Our time is gone. Just lift your voice and thank the Lord for this word you have received tonight. Bless you, Pastor. for your power, for your grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to open your mouth in one minute. I know we're teaching on the gifts, but let's start with words. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to make decrees. Don't let the devil tell you anything. Open your mouth. Don't be silent. Make decrees. It says, declare thou that he might be just right. Speak over the anointing in your life. Speak over your ministry. Are you prophesying? Speak over your marriage. Speak over your destiny help us. Cancel every negative word over your life. Nullify the scorching tongues of men. Pronouncements, conclusions that have come by men. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My God, you anoint my head with oil. You anoint me with favor. You anoint me with grace. My cup runneth over. Gentiles come to my light. They are kings to the brightness of my rising. Koinonia rises as a shining light. Ever brighter, ever brighter to the perfect day. No weapon fashion against me. No weapon fashion against this ministry. 
shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me shall fall in judgment declare declare I decree and declare I am planted in the house of God I flourish in the courts of my God I am fat and flourishing the abundance of the earth is delivered unto me everything works for my good everything works in my favor men arise to help me men arise to support what I represent in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord makes me a blessing I remain a blessing I remain a blessing in the name of Jesus rising ever brighter growing in the anointing growing in illumination ministry expanding on the left and on the right in the name of Jesus Christ the purposes of Christ being established through koinonia I decree and declare all that God has given me is blessed I and the children that God has given me we are for signs and wonders signs and wonders I enjoy abundance I enjoy supplies don't be tired don't let the devil deceive you that what you are saying is not sending a signal in the realm of the spirit I'm fruitful on every side in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of revelation is upon me I have understanding I have understanding I have the mind of Christ the love of God is at work in me it's my year of triumph I prophesy thanks be to God who causes me to triumph it's my year of triumph in the name of Jesus Christ no death I have no business with death in the name of Jesus Christ I walk in dominion I walk in grace Hallelujah. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. It's my confession. Walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. I'm walking in power, walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. One more time. Hey, I'm walking in power, walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. Just the voices. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know. One more time. I'm walking in power. Walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. I know who I am. Listen. Carry this attitude back. Don't allow those who speak and say you are talking, you are not serious. No worry. Thank God this race is personal. Do whatever you believe and leave me alone. If my talking is too childish and too, no problem, let me continue being foolish and talk my way into my destiny. Listen, hold on. Don't allow people, hear me. Hear me, Koinonia. Don't allow anybody emotionally blackmail you when you are practicing the word of God. Don't allow anybody to make you feel pleased. What is all this childish thing? This is how kings reign. This is how people legislate. I will never stop speaking. Hallelujah. Keep standing. Our time is gone. Please don't miss next week's. Ah, next week is um, the graduation of our school of ministry students. Hallelujah. So it's going to be the week afterwards. Hallelujah.
Before I take the altar call, it's a very important announcement. As you know, our SOM graduation is one of the major ministry activities. We're happy this is the fifth state of our students, and we are very, very proud to be releasing them. The largest set so far, praise the Lord. I want you, it's, it's, it's another miracle service on its own. Um, so I want you to come early. Please come, if you can come. Uh, from 5.30 or 5.45, no problem, so that we can start. There's a lot to do. There are many of them. Please, please make sure that you are here and let's, let's celebrate and let's trust God. Invite your loved ones, those who are following, listening from all over. You can follow. We'll still, those online, you can still connect with us. Hallelujah. Now, I have to do this. I felt so bad because of the miracle service. I couldn't make an altar call. And I tell you, I've been feeling guilty from Sunday till now. Not, not guilt like condemnation, but it's just been in my heart. I had to ask God for forgiveness. I don't know how many times. So we're going to make an altar call now. If the Lord started convicting you right from Sunday, and then with the balance of what has happened today, there are people here inside, outside, overflow, one, two, by the road, those following online. I want to give you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. Our time is gone, so you will have to be fast. And there are others who have one time surrendered their hearts to the Lord, but for some reason, things went out of balance, and you're saying, Lord, I return sincerely and truly. If you're coming from outside, I want you to please run. Wherever you are, inside here, outside, just make it here quickly. Let's honor them. We have two minutes for this. We have two minutes for this. God bless you. Clear the way for them. They are coming. God bless you. God bless you. If you came for the miracle service and the Lord told you we are supposed to come out here for the altar call, run quickly. Quickly, 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 quickly. There are people coming from outside. Encourage them and clear the way for them. Please, quickly, run to Jesus. Our time is up. Our time is up. Overflow, one, two. Apostle, I'm shy. Don't be shy. Hell is real. Run quickly, quickly. Jesus is Lord of your life. He wants to make meaning out of your life and destiny. And you are here. You are saying, Apostle, I gave my life to Jesus one time. Keep coming. God bless you. Run, run, and come. Apostle, can I come and rededicate my life to Christ? You are more than welcome. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. You are invited. Join them and be sure. Join them and be sure. Come quickly. Hallelujah. I was told I was born again when I was small. Join them. Join them. You, you are obviously not born again. Please join them quickly. Join them quickly. You don't impart salvation. It's a personal affair. Join them quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, um, ladies and gentlemen, for this bold decision. I know that many of you have come acknowledging the Lordship of Jesus. I want to lead you in a prayer, and I want you to believe Lift your right hand and say this after me. You're not reciting a poem. This is a miracle happening. There are people coming from outside. Please, can you run? The sister coming, run. Gentlemen, please, ushers, clear the way for them so that they would hurry up. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you. I believe in you. That you died for me. You shed your blood for my sin. Tonight, I have heard your word. I make you Lord of my life i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare from tonight that i am a child of god the spirit of the lord is within me i receive the grace to live a victorious life in jesus name keep your hands lifted jesus i present to you the ones you died for thank you for the grace for these ones to come in the name of jesus christ